So leading up to the release of No Man's Sky, the creator Sean Murray had been a regular Twitter user, basically sending out tweets every day, usually multiple times a day. As I was scrolling through his feed getting ready to do this video, I came across one that I thought was sort of funny. It was like maybe he was trying to tell us all something, but he was trying to make fun of Peter Moylan a bit, which Peter Moylan, of course, is a bit of a meme because he's known to exaggerate things without ever being able to deliver them. And now... People are comparing Sean Murray to Peter Moylan. So what goes around comes around, I guess. But now that No Man's Sky has come out and tons of fans have been able to play the game, a lot of people are left wondering what the hell happened. They got a lot of questions. But so far, they haven't been able to have good luck getting Sean to reply to those questions because it appears that he's taken a break from Twitter and hasn't been seen since August the 18th. So quite a long time to be away from Twitter when you were on it pretty much every day while you were working on the game. So it was basically left up to the community to fill in the blanks. And so once the PC version hit, modders were able to go through the files, see exactly what was in the game. And it turns out, as many of you already know, there were numerous things that were promised for this game that there was absolutely no code for. And even things like, remember back at E3 when he was standing on stage and he's showing off No Man's Sky and he proclaims, you know, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm just about to pick a random planet and fly down and who knows what's going to be there. I've never been there before. And he's acting like, you know, this is totally random, just totally spur of the moment. He's just going to do something crazy that they hadn't planned for at E3. And then it turns out whenever they go into the files, they see the E3 files and the planets weren't random at all. He knew exactly where to go. He knew exactly what was going to be there. So I'm not going to go through all the lies, all the misleading advertisements, because a lot of people have already done that. They've done a lot better job than I could ever do with it. So if you want to see those videos, like for some reason, if you haven't realized yet that you've been lied to, there's like videos down there that will be him lying for like eight minutes straight. So I'll link those below so you can go check them out. But it's not debatable at this point in time whether he lied or at the very least misled people. That's not up to interpretation. Like there's plenty of proof out there. It's a fact. Now you can argue that some of the problems revolving around this game is due to the community because they just took, you know, kind of the inspiration and just ran with it, filled in the blanks themselves without having a whole lot to go on. And so they created this hype train that couldn't be stopped. You had Nia Gaff, you had tons of people, you had crazy sons of bitches posting up death threats because the game was delayed and people were calling it the game of the century. This nothing like this has ever been done before, you know. And so you also had people who were claiming this was going to be game of the year before they had actually ever touched the game. So yeah, the community does deserve some portion of the blame, but you've always had these group of bootlickers out there, right? You've always had the groups of people who will stand up and praise everything and anything simply due to whatever name is posted with it. So they definitely helped contribute to the problem, but you cannot deny that large parts of this game were misleading in trailers and through dev interviews and marketing. I mean, you can go and look at the trailers right now that they still have listed up on the Steam page, which I honestly think should be taken down, and you can't watch those trailers and come away saying, you know what, if I played the game, that's what I actually experienced, you know? So here's the thing. A lot of people are upset. And a lot of people are pissed off that they spent $60 on an interactive screensaver. And they're demanding refunds. Stories broke out over the last week that a large number of players are getting refunds from Steam, from Amazon, even from PlayStation Network in some cases, where users are complaining, sometimes after several hours of playing the game, that they say, you know, what I bought wasn't what I was promised. And this is glitchy as hell, and it crashed, and so they were purchasing an item based on false advertising, and so a lot of those refunds are being fulfilled. So this actually upsets some other people who say this isn't fair. You shouldn't be able to play a game for several hours and then be able to get a refund. Which I admit, you know, in one case, one case keeps on being brought up over and over. They say one guy had over 50 hours and was given a refund. And I admit that... You know, on the outset, that sounds bad. 
You know, you shouldn't be able to play a game for 50 hours and get a refund, a lot of people say. But what they fail to mention in a lot of these news articles that are bringing up this one particular instance is they failed to show you the picture of the error report where the player had tons of issues and crashes almost every few minutes. And so the game basically became unplayable over time. It continuously started to get worse and progressively worse. And so they failed to mention that, you know. But if I buy something off Amazon or get it from Walmart or whatever, I plug it in, I use it for 48 hours, and then it starts failing and crashing on me, you're damn right I deserve a refund. And so I also believe that if you're playing a game and there's some sort of data corruption or something else like that that makes the game unplayable, you definitely deserve a refund. I don't care how many hours you've been able to play on it. Now, some people are saying that you shouldn't get a refund once you purchase a game, period. Uh, in fact, there was a former Sony content manager, the guy who helped bring No Man's Sky to PS4, he went as far as to say that people wanting refunds are no different than thieves. Yeah, he basically called anybody wanting a refund a thief, which is a pretty harsh thing to say in my opinion because I would argue that getting people to give you money based on false statements, based on false advertising, is pretty close to a snake oil salesman and that's pretty damn close to thievery. So, as you may know, Steam has a policy in place where you can get a refund on a game if you've played it for under two hours. But they also state in that policy that if you've played the game for over two hours, they'll still look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. So it's possible that even if you play the game over two hours, you can still get a refund. Now, they, you know, they will hammer down on people who abuse this sort of policy, just like GameStop. I think you can go trade in used games if you don't like it in a so long period, but they'll, you know, bash you if you do it for too many games. So anyway, a lot of people going out asking for refunds. And I mean, I could have a little bit more sympathy for a guy who says, you know what? I just got ahead of myself. I got too excited. I made some mistakes and I'm going to try to make it right by putting everything that's missing back in the game. But instead, I mean, he's gotten on Twitter once the game releases and he just makes statements that, you know, are so generic like, oh, my mind is blown by how many people are playing this game and totally blows off and ignores all the people who are concerned that some things may not be in the game. He totally blows off and ignores all the evidence that's against him. And so if you buy a product and it doesn't work, and you keep experiencing crashes, then yes, no doubt, you deserve your money back. If a game is deceptive in its marketing and it's full of lies and cut features, then yeah, I think you deserve your money back. Now, if you just play a game and you thought it sucked, I think that's a different beast. You know, I don't necessarily think you should be able to play through a whole game, beat it, say I didn't enjoy that, and get your money back. That's totally different. Uh, and thankfully, though, Steam and Origin and places like that, they actually do offer refunds even if you don't like the game. So that is a possibility on some platforms, which I think is extremely pro-consumer. But again, they put a time limit on it because you shouldn't be able to play and beat the entire game before you get a refund. But we're not just talking about not liking No Man's Sky. There are people who live in countries where there's actually very strict laws against false advertising. And I think there are actually some people who could probably bring suits against this company or at the very least demand that their money be given back to them based on what was promised and then compared to what was actually given. Australia, for instance, is one of those countries that I understand is very strict about companies having to deliver what they advertise. So I know some gamers are out there preaching and hating on people for asking for a refund. And I guess maybe, you know, people are going to hear this video. They're going to think I'm anti-gamer or something or anti-dev or, or some stupid shit like that. But me personally, I think that if you believe you deserve a refund for No Man's Sky, then you should ask for one. Because we can't go around rewarding this type of behavior. And that's exactly what you do when you hand over money to people like Sean Murray and you let them take the money and run. That does it for me, The Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Have you ever felt Are you listening? Damn.